It's a true honor to be here. Thank you so much to St. Thomas for honoring me with this. Um, I can't begin to tell you how much it means coming from New Brunswick and receiving this honor, coming from Fredericton. I'll tell you also, I didn't realize that it was actually a doctor of letters until right now, but that is particularly sweet. I'm gonna tell you a very brief story. I have three older brothers and they all are doctors. <laughs> and for 15 years, when I broke it to my dad that I wasn't gonna become a doctor, he said, are you sure you're ready to be the only Mr. Miles? And I became a musician, and that's what I've been doing ever since. And I just snuck in the back door and got myself a doctorate. So I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Thank you for making that a reality. It means a lot. My brothers are going to hate it. My brothers are going to hate it. But first, but mainly, I want to talk to you, the graduates. I want to congratulate you. I want you to take a moment and just think about how good this feels. Think about how much work you put in, how much money you spent, all of the commitment that went into making this happen. Now, you're going to go to parties after this, and you're going to be hanging out with your parents, friends, and they're all going to ask you, what are you doing next? What are you doing next? I don't want you to worry about that right now. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this moment right now and why it feels so good. And my theory is it feels so good because it was hard. It was difficult, it was a challenge, and you stepped up to it, and you achieved. And now you're sitting there, and you're about to get your degree. And that is a big deal. It's a big deal for all of you, and that's why we're all here. And it's not to be, it's not to be diminished in any way. It's a, it's a very important achievement that you've made. And also, when you're in university, you learn a lot. You learn a lot, and, and the president, President Russell, spoke about this the power of a liberal arts degree, you learn to listen to different opinions. You learn how to be wrong. You learn that you're wrong a lot and that it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to converse with people that have totally different opinions. That's what makes things interesting, right? That's what this degree is all about. That's what you've been doing. And now you're finishing the degree and you're moving on. So I'm here, if I can do anything for us to think about what that degree meant and what that means when you learn how to disagree, learn to be wrong, and learn to be open to different opinions. Because it's super duper important. It really is. I've gone on, I did a liberal arts education, and I went and became a musician. I was sitting where you were 15 years ago. I didn't know what I was going to do. I thought I was going to go to law school. I still might. But you know what? I really I had no idea. I went and I worked in politics for a year. I studied political science, so I went and I did a political internship. And after a year in politics, I decided the world needed more love songs. <laughs> My parents weren't pumped about it, but that's what I did. I started writing songs. I started traveling around the country. And I was recently asked, there was a poll that, there was a, there was a polling agency that called my house and they called and said, is this Mr. Miles? And I said, yes. They said, where'd you go to school? I said, I went to Mount Allison. I studied, did a liberal arts degree. Well, how much do you, how relevant is your degree in your day-to-day, -day, your job? And I was like, yikes, well, not, not particularly relevant. I write songs and I sing them on a stage. And I studied political science. And they said, well, how much do you use it day-to-day? -day? And I said, well, really, probably not very much. And then the next question was, how much do you value it out of 10? And I said, 10. 10, it was no doubt. Because even though I don't do anything that's directly related to political science, my liberal arts degree is what I carry with me all the time. And what it was is that I learned about this idea of accepting different opinions, of being open to different opinions, being strong enough in my own opinion that I can handle lots of other stuff. And it's given me this desire to work with all sorts of people. And that, I think, has been one of my greatest strengths. So what I'm talking about is you go into university and you got this going on, right? This is, this is your range of knowledge, your worldview. And every time you learn something else, it goes like this. And then it goes like this. And this feels good. It feels really, really good. I like to think about it like a library. You go into a library and there's a certain number of books, but every time you learn another language, every time you learn another subject, there's more books at your disposal. You know what I'm saying? The more interested you become in the world, the more interesting 
the world becomes. It's like you could, it's kind of selfish, but it's awesome and it doesn't die down. That's the beautiful thing is that you just can keep on going, keep on going into the world of, of history, of whatever you're interested is, and it will just keep on giving to you. And the trick is, the thing that people don't realize is, not only does it make the world more interesting, but it makes you more interesting. The more interested you are in the world, the more interesting you are. You don't want to talk to someone who's called closed off, thinks they're right all the time, and is not particularly interested in the world around them. It's fun to talk to people who are open and interested in the world. I wrote a whole bunch of notes down, and I'm not looking at any of them because I'm so pumped for you guys right now. <laughs> but what I'm here to tell you is keep that spirit alive. Keep that curiosity alive. I think about my own life and the big moments in my life. I went to Belgium on a rotary exchange when I was in grade 11. I left FHS, no friends, zero friends. I moved to Belgium, and all of a sudden, I was in a totally different world. And this was a major eye-opening experience for me because all of a sudden my world wasn't defined by my three older brothers or my friend group at FHS. It became totally different. It became Europe. It became learning the French language in a really serious way. And then in university I went and I lived in China for a year. I studied Chinese. I studied Mandarin for a year. Another massive experience where my worldview kind of went like this and just went boom. And I just kept on getting addicted to this idea of broadening my worldview. And even though every time you do that, just like you've experienced at university, it's hard sometimes. But those movements are where we grow. It's when we get outside of our comfort zone. This is our comfort zone. Every time we go like this, that's where the gold happens. That's where the magic is. We got to remind yourself as you're going from university to keep on seeking that. Keep on seeking those moments of expansion. I was lucky enough to have that in Belgium, you know, in China. And then I graduated from university. I had it in politics. It, was, it actually was a really interesting, you know, experience. But where I've noticed it the most has been in my career as a musician. You wouldn't think it, but it happens all the time. They mentioned Inner Ninja, that song that I did with Classified. I still work with Class all the time. He's one of my closest friends. You wouldn't look at me and think that I had the biggest selling hip hop recording of all time in Canada. I get that. It was a surprise to me too. <laughs> it really was. But the point is, is that Classified and I came from totally different places. I was like music nerd. I did the band, I did Royal Conservatory. I knew all the theory about music and scales and all that. He'd been making beats since he was about 12 years old just making beats on a drum machine. He didn't know minor or major chords. He doesn't have any sense of the theory of music. Now, I could have gotten in that room and said, listen, man, you don't know anything about music. Why would I make music with you? Or I could have said, obviously, you make great music. He'd been making records for years that I thought were pretty cool. I don't know how we did it. I didn't know what the process was, but let's get in the same room and see what we can do. And he was one of those guys that was open to work it. And so we came from totally different places, totally different backgrounds, and we got in the room, we started to work together. And you got to think, I came in with that idea, I played my guitar, I sang, I went, I read the rules before I broke them. This was a verse that I had. It was just a verse. It didn't have a chorus. I'd been sitting on it for months. It had no future on its own. And then I brought it into the room with him, and he went, I love that. Let's do this. Let's do this, let's do this. And then I was like, what if we called it Inner Ninja? And he was like, ooh. And both of us were like, that could be a terrible idea. But then we took the risk and we did it. And it was a massive experience for me. You know, it was, it was a real highlight of my career. As you know, we had to play on the Junos and the Much Music Video Awards, it was nuts. Nothing really changed though. I mean, we played in this club in Edmonton one time, we rocked the place. And I was walking around feeling all good about myself, and this dude came up to me, and he's like, hey, aren't you the guy who plays the nerd on the video? <laughs> I was like, harsh. I was like, I don't play the nerd. I am the nerd, man. <laughs> I am the nerd. But listen, what I'm trying to get at is that what made that so special is that we were both open to this experience. We were both open to working together. And what happened was you don't cancel each other out. You add to each other. We got to a place that neither of us could have got 
gotten to on our own. And that's the same skill set that you have now. You're going to be open to this idea because you've learned in university that you're not always right. You don't know everything. And so when you're going forward, you got to remember that because it's so powerful. And you don't need to travel to China and you don't need to travel to Belgium. It's all around us all the time. There are always opportunities for growth, for learning from other people. New Brunswick is filled with fascinating culture. It is filled with fascinating culture. There's opportunities all the time to learn about indigenous culture, to learn about Acadian culture, to learn from new Canadians who have just moved here. These opportunities are presented to us all the time. And one of the greatest things in my career as over the last couple of years has been getting to know the Acadian community in New Brunswick. And when I say the world becomes more interesting, it's because I've really learned this from this Acadian experience. New Brunswick was one thing to me in, in, at first. And as I've gotten to know the Acadian community so well by playing music in French and touring in northern New Brunswick and meeting all these musicians, New Brunswick has become that much richer to me. And it's not a zero-sum game. It doesn't mean that the things that you loved before disappear. It means that you just love more. All of a sudden, New Brunswick means something different. When I work with Classified, it's not that I don't love folk music any less or country music or the music that I play. It's that now I can listen to hip-hop music and understand how it's made and why it's so great. You see what I'm saying? Before I only liked this, now I have access to all of this. So that's the main thing I want to leave you with is when you're leaving here today, keep that spirit alive. Don't start going like this. Don't do it. It happens. We all know it happens. We see it. And it's an easy thing to do. We start getting comfortable, and we start to think we're right all the time, and we close ourselves off more and more. You will find that the gold exists, and you will have your most valuable moments at the moments when you expand. And you challenge yourself and you hang with people who are really different, and you work with people who are different. That's, that's the lesson I want to leave you with, but I'm really proud of you. You should be extremely proud of your achievements, and uh, go kick some butt. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.